It's another side that like wants to take more. It wants to go that one more round. Because like going that one more round when you don't think you can, that's what makes all the difference in your life. You know what I mean? Welcome to another episode of One More Round, the Rocky Series podcast. I am your host, and with me today, well, it's just Katie. Katie, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Uh, I'm not going to do a joke where I say, you know, Kyle quit or Kyle's dead. or you know, <laughs> I think I've done that before, but Kyle's on vacation. He's on a, well, yours was a vacation. His would be a, mm-hmm. I don't know, what would his be? A vacation? I don't know. It doesn't work. It's not the same. So yeah, he's on vacation. I I was torn. Here's the thing. I did say in one of our early episodes, because when you did your Ecuador recording, we're like, we Mm got to do it with Katie regardless. I think partly is because you were stuck in a hotel. And it's almost like, well, she gave me something to do. Yeah, you had nothing better to do. Why not record a podcast? Yeah, but Kyle's running around. He obviously just can't. He's out and about. He can't record. And we're going to do like a midweek recording. And I was like, I'm busy at work. And I was looking at my schedule and this was not a good week. I'm like, ah, Sunday mornings. I'm telling you, Sunday mornings at this time for me is just the perfect time. It works out really well for me as well, I got to say. So from here on out, it might not be all three of us, but there will at least be two of us. It won't be just one of us. But anyways, we miss you, Kyle. Come back and stay safe and have fun. Your coffee looks delicious. What do you got going on there, Ryan? I don't know what brand it is. Boy, I'll have to text my wife. But is it like a fancy like latte type thing? Uh, not a latte. Very little cream, uh, freshly ground every day. I, I forget the name of the brand, but it's like we're snobs. But it's actually my wife's a snob, <laughs> and then she turned me into a snob when it comes to that. Yeah. yeah, might as well drink the good stuff. Although I drink too much wine to drink really fancy wine. Although I honestly can't tell the difference between like a fifty dollar bottle and a fifteen dollar bottle. So. That's what they say. I've seen or whatever, you know, taste testers, professional yeah. wine tasters, and they're like, no, you're paying for the design yeah. of the bottle. Yeah. Hey, uh, I thought of you last night because I watched one of your favorite movies, I guess. Okay, so no, a non-sly? It is a sly movie. Facetiously one of your favorites. Oh, oh facetiously. Uh, over the top? Yes. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> oh, stop. Stop. <laughs> uh, anyway. Want to do a quick Katie review of over the top? Oh, God. The suspenders serve no purpose, but damn, he looks good in them. <laughs> I mean, the wrestlers at the end, the best part, obviously, is the end, the tournament. And I'm like, these guys are characters. Where did they get those guys? 80s. That's where they got them. Oh, man. Okay. Anyway. Yep. Yeah. Did you see the arm break? No. No. There's a real arm Which break. match? It's really? during a montage of arm wrestling. A guy's arm broke in real life. I'll send you the clip on YouTube. It's gross. And it's in the film. Oh, my God. The other thing I was like, what are the shoe things they have on? Those platform shoe things? Sly wears those. <laughs> to be taller. No, they show a bunch of them. Oh, also, the ladies get half the money. What the hell? The women's version only gets 50 grand. And not, go figure. They're not a draw. I'm sorry, Katie. They're just not a draw. <laughs> well, they wear skimpy little outfits. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, well, they're only wearing half the clothes, half the pay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Now, we got a couple of pieces of Sly news. Let's start little. Sly sold this home. He sold this match in Florida. Did you hear about that? No. Is he getting the hell out of Florida? I don't know where he's going to, but he sold his home to Adele and her boyfriend, husband, or whatever. Oh, really? And I did think, not hear that. Yeah, I think they got it for like under under asking price or, or whatever the listing price was by, you know, 10 or 15 million, whatever. But yeah, he sold his big estate and Adele seems to be very happy to have bought it. But Didn't he, they just recently move there? Or did I make that up? I don't think he's been there for 20 years. I think it's... Yeah. So I don't know where he's headed to. Maybe they're downsizing. I don't know. I think his daughters, don't they still live with him? Is that kind of the thing still? Honestly, I don't know, but they're all full on adults. Yeah, I think so, too. So it would be odd. I don't know. So all the men can legally creep on the daughters now, I think is 
I think it's mm. yeah. Oh, so back to the Dell. So Dell bought the house, but apparently the statue stays or is still there. There's no indication that he's taking it with him. What statue? The Rocky statue. There's more than one. I... Oh, okay. You, I know you listened to all the Going the Distance, but early, early Going the Distance episode, we we interviewed Robin Schumberg Nichols, who is the daughter of the statue creator. She's kind of like the spokesman for the business. This- she lives in Evergreen, Colorado. There you go. Because I bought a replica. Yeah. Do you remember that interview? Or that, yeah. we, inter- that we interviewed Yeah, I her? do. Yeah, so mm-hmm. she mentioned there's three statues. One is – I forget where one is, but one is not publicly anywhere. I think it's that's the one that's for sale. Oh. One is in Sly's yard, and one is on display at the bottom of the stairs in Philly. So Sly has the Rocky statue in his yard in Florida, but Adele, when they moved in, the statue was still there. It's probably like an ordeal to get something like that moved, but unless she was like, hey, can we work this into the contract? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she's a big Rocky fan. I hope. And suspect that Sly will take the statue. But yeah, now, I'm sure. Speaking of Sly and his daughters, of course, you heard the news that Sly did announce that he is doing a a la Kardashian type reality show with. Now it's his daughters. The daughters are doing the reality show, but Sly said himself that he pops in and out of some episodes because he's around. He lives there. That's what my understanding is that they still live together. And I wonder if that's part of the move. Is to facilitate the reality show. Actually, that's a really good point. Although, like, why wouldn't they just all, like, live together and then he come visit from time to time? Because they probably have enough money. Yeah, I did see that you posted that. And I didn't really look further into it because I, I don't know. You're torn. I get it. The idea of the Kardashians type show, it's a divisive type of topic. It's very popular. So the one thing you can't Mm -hmm. deny is his popularity. You can think it's true. stupid, schlocky, self-indulgent. All those things are true or whatever you think – whatever your opinion on the matter, the fact is it's made a lot of money for the Kardashians. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say that I had heard some years ago, maybe like, I don't know, five years ago that there was some talk about this. You know, like he's got a model wife and he's got these three – Daughters, one of them probably wasn't 18 yet, maybe. I can't remember how old the youngest one is, but they're all beautiful, of course. So, you know, there was talk of it at the time, and I don't know if it just took this long to kind of get all the eyes dotted, so to speak, and make sure there was an audience for it and this and that. I would actually watch this one, somewhat hate watch, but to give it a chance, I would try to be open-minded to it. But I'm, I am very nervous about it. That's a concern that anyone that's a Sly fan would have is like, does this tarnish, the, quote unquote, the legacy? I don't think it's going to be schlocky or mm-hmm. – but here's the thing. I know Sly really is trying hard to – how should I say? He's very supportive of his daughter's fame. Set uh, them up for success. Sure. And that's what a parent does. Look, I've – yeah. I've done what I can for my kids. I'm just not a celebrity. So it's funny how we judge celebrities for doing that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just not a celebrity, but I have also given my kids what little resources and ability I have to set them up for success. It's just Sly has more success, That's so true. to speak, more financial. That's true. But we often criticize, you know, we criticize the kings and queens of the world for doing the very thing that we would do had we had the same resources. So he's he's supporting his daughters. He is a celebrity. That's his world. That's what he knows. The Kardashians, I don't personally like them. So I think that's where the filth we feel mm-hmm. towards it. But I think yeah. the Stallones might be – I think they're more – what I've seen on Instagram, on his videos and stuff, I think they're more silly and fun and adorable. And even it's like innocent. I think that's kind of their image is like they're, they're the innocent versions. I don't think they've mm. had sex yet. They have boyfriends. You know what I mean? See, like I know they have. But you just don't yeah, – Yeah, I was like, uh... no, I, but <laughs> What I mean is you, they don't do that kind of – they have a few bathing suit photos or whatever. But they don't – there's no sex tapes. There's no – Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't tell which one is which. I mean, I haven't, no. like, studied them or anything. Can you name three yes. daughters? What are they? I know what their names. Sistine, Sophia, and Scarlett. Oh, see, I always forget Scarlett. Good job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're all S's. Um, Adorable. <laughs> it is. And they're really beautiful um, girls, so obviously. Because they could be models. Their mom is a model. like, Or maybe some of them are. I don't know. Reality TV, I don't think I can think of a single example of where there's a reality TV show about a family or a couple, and it does not ruin the marriage. Interesting. All can right. you think of an example? 
There's always a divorce. It's- Hulk Hogan did one, and they had been married forever, he and his wife, and they got divorced after doing their reality show. They had been married for a really long time, right. and then they did the reality show, and they got divorced. Donald in our discourse said the exact same thing. That's what I was about to read. He said, for every Kardashian oh. show, we get 10 Hogan Knows Best shows. <laughs> oh, <laughs> those are better. I mean, I actually watched some of them. Ah, that's funny. Just, yeah. yeah, and that is the fear. But I think Sly's a little bit more savvy. I think his marriage is a little bit more strong. I, like Sly's been in the business a long time. I don't see him. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And we're all going to watch. It's going to be on Paramount+. Plus. Also, he says, Donald said in our Discord, and if you want to join our Discord, check out the show descriptions. You can join our discussions live. So thanks, Donald, for hanging out. Donald said, I look forward to an episode where the girls bring a guy home to meet Rambo. And you know that's going to be filmed. One of those three girls is going to have a first date, and they're going to, we're going to, and I think everyone's going to want to see the guy meeting Sly for the first time. Yes. It was, Even if it's it's so staged big, or scripted to yeah, a degree, yeah, yeah. We, at least we'll get some sort of peek behind the curtain, what it's like to meet Sly, you know? Yeah. Well, that's um, interesting. You said it was going to be on um, Paramount Plus because mm-hmm. that's what his new show is on. I wonder if this was like part of the deal. Oh, probably. Like, like hey, I want my daughters to get a show. Oh, I would assume. You know what I mean? Like maybe even a pay cut for the budget and say, fine, but we get a, you know, I'll take a pay cut if my daughters get some exposure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. One last piece of, so speaking of the Ask Me Anything, I, uh, but I want to bring this up. I'm going to, I don't want to say talk a little smack because that's not what I mean to do here, but I'm a little bit. Okay, I've interviewed a few big people on my shows, you know, from... Yes, you have. Vince DiCola, Richard E. Grant, who played George Washington Duke in Rocky Five, some of the extras from Rocky One, like the nurse from uh, Rocky Two. I've, of course, interviewed Bill Conti, Vince DiCola, Robert Tepper. Now, and I've had a few people uh, give me the... Uh, say they're going to do it, but they bowed out. At least, But at least they had the conversation with me, i.e. Kevin Connolly, who played... Turtle and Entourage, not Turtle, an Entourage. What was his name? An Entourage, but I can't think of what his name was. Yeah, I can't but remember. Yeah. Either, but you, yeah, of course, Kevin Connolly. But he was the bully in Rocky Five. I say this because I, I, I sent an email, and I'm going to be a little. And fine, if anyone knows the guy from Planet Sly, he does the. So I don't know what's going on here. So the guy that does Planet Sly, he's the one that had Sly on and kind of acted as MC for the Ask Me Anything. He would say, okay, who's got the next question? You know, what have you? And he did a fairly good job. I don't know what his connection to Sly is. I don't, I still don't understand. So I, I reached out to him via email. He has his own podcast too. So he's a podcaster. Obviously he's bigger than me, you know, but I don't think he's that big. He's not like Joe Rogan or mm-hmm. he's another. And his podcast is about nfts and bitcoin that's kind of their podcast it's about that world okay so these guys are bitcoin coin nft podcasters and they somehow got in touch with sly enough that sly agreed to do and ask me anything regarding his nfts and his career Mm. and everything so the planet sly discord is designed or it's it's strictly about the nfts yeah, that's the Discord. It's called Planet Sly, but it's not a necessarily a like I can't post my show there. They've made all these rules. It is laid out mm-hmm. like a Fort Knox type of Discord. Okay, it's very nope. You are here to buy his NFTs. And then the guy at the end of the Ask Me Anything, he did. A, that's the thing. Sly comes on. Sly bows out, and the guy has everyone's attention. And he plugs the NFTs at the very end, and I I might insert that audio right now in the uh, post edit so people can hear what the nfts are about and how it works um on behalf of the team i want to make sure that i answer some nft project related questions even though there's uh you know we've got looks like 19 days before the project will be minting um you do want to be sly listed and again this is not something that we're giving away easily to people you can't just show up um and get sly listed we want fans sly wants to connect with fans that because the purpose of this set is not just to have another pfp but to bring connection and uh, in real world experiences for sly and his fans together uh, so the sale is going to happen there's nine thousand nine hundred and ninety seven pfps of sly guys in the collection 25 of them numbered one through 25 are the golden one of ones so the nft 
NFTs themselves, they are all gold. Each one of them is a unique creation, and each one of them is digitally signed by Sly and numbered. He sat down at the iPad, signed 25 times, and numbered each one. And they're going to correspond to the golden Sly Guy NFTs, numbers 1 through 25. But those are going to be auctioned on OpenSea. Okay, and we'll come back to that in a moment. The rest of the collection is going to be offered as mint to first our Sly listed members and then public. So for those that are Sly listed or able to buy public, you can, you'll be able to purchase one. You'll be able to purchase two. Depending how many we have Sly listed, you might be able to purchase three at one time. However, Here's the first IRL experience that everybody's going to get to participate in. If you own three Sly Guys at a date which we will announce a snapshot of the blockchain, so obviously after the sale, after the reveal, we'll announce a snapshot date. And if you have at least three Sly Guys in your wallet, you're going to be airdropped a ticket to a private dinner in Miami where Sly is going to attend and he's going to speak and he's going to inspire each and every one of us that are there. It's going to be an amazing experience. I don't know that he's ever done anything quite like this before. Definitely not with NFTs. Now, if you are one of the fortunate people that wins one of the golden um, one of ones through the open sea auction, then you're going to get a VIP experience ticket to the dinner, which means not only will you be able to attend the dinner, but you're also going to have the opportunity to meet Sly face to face, take picture, ask him a couple questions, shake his hand, give him a hug, whatever it is, you know, that you want to communicate to him as a fan, that VIP experience is going to happen. Now, this is really cool. Everybody who owns at least one Sly Guy is going to get into the Stallone Movie Club. Now, this is something that we've not seen anybody in the NFT space do before, and definitely nobody of Stallone's profile has done this. Just by holding this one Sly Guy in your wallet, you're going to be able to log in to a special platform where Sly is going to screen one of his classic films. With everybody who's watching, there will be a chat room that will be open so that he can answer questions as we're watching the film together. And he's going to give live running commentary on that film. Is it going to be Rocky? Is it going to be Rambo? Is it going to be Expendables? We don't know yet which ones he's going to choose. But as a holder, you're going to get to participate in this at nft nyc which takes place in uh, june of this year where uh, myself and travis wright are going to be performing um uh, our our show there at the event which is the biggest nft conference i think there's going to be six thousand people or so we're going to have an nft nyc party so everybody who holds a sly guy that's going to be joining us in new york during this conference you're going to be able to to join us at this event and then There's the stuff that we can't tell you yet, and there's some reasons we can't tell you yet. I'm not going to go in depth on why that is, but let's just say that when we hit 100% sold out, which we expect to happen pretty quickly, it's going to trigger IRL experiences. It's going to trigger perhaps, no, no absolute promises yet, but maybe there's some merch in there. Maybe there's some art in there. Maybe there's some digital goods there. Maybe there's some other experiences that Sly wishes to provide. But that happens when it's 100% sold out. And so we're going to have all kinds of surprises for those of you who are holding Sly Guys once we're at that point. And it's going to be really exciting. We're going to do some things with this collection that we don't believe has been done by any collection yet um, in the space. And that's, you know, one of the things that the team here wants to be pioneering. And of course, you know, as the, the godfather of motivation, Sly wants to lead the way as well for this community and what we're building here. So we're, we're really excited about it. Uh, we appreciate all of the questions from those of you who joined us or submitted questions earlier. And of course, we appreciate you being part of this community. Uh, the countdown has begun. Uh, I got to say that today was a special thrill for me because it's my birthday. So what a great birthday present to, uh, to be able to, to speak to Sly again. And, uh, and I feel very blessed for that. And I hope that you all feel blessed for having 
participated in this really unique event. Thanks so much for coming. Make sure that you are on the sly list and uh, get involved here with this community and this Discord. We expect that it's going to keep growing significantly as we approach the uh, May 24th mint date, and you do not want to miss any of what we're going to be bringing your way. So this is Joel Kahn of the Bad Crypto Podcast and the Nifty Show. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Until then, keep punching up. I say all this, I sent him an email, and this is where it bugs me. And if this guy's listening or if he has anyone that wants to, that's fine. What bugs me is I got responses, and I don't did an interview, you know, Vince DiCola and Bill Conti, Oscar winner composer yeah. Bill Conti. Like, who, who, if, if anyone says this guy's name in the public, nobody knows who he is. He's a nobody. Yeah. At the end of the day, he's a nobody. Nobody knows who this guy is. But if you say Bill Conti, you can ask a thousand people and you'll get a lot of people saying, now I know who Bill Conti is. Okay. Bill Conti, at least, not only did he do the interview, but he took the time to respond. And this is what bugs me is I sent an email. My email basically said, Hey, this is a million one shot. But just like the Rocky movies, I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take my shot and yeah. reach out to you and say, hey, you know, I enjoyed your ask me anything discussion with Sly. But I would, you know, I run a podcast dedicated to Rocky and dedicated to Sly and his movies. I would love to talk t- to you about how does this work? How do the NFTs work exactly? And how do Bitcoins work? But also, how did you connect with Sly? And not even like don't speak for Sly, but how did you reach out to him? And and also like talk about the Ask Me Anything and and your fandom of Sly. You must be a fan of Sly. You yeah. reached out to him or whatever. You know, just let's talk shop. Let's talk NFTs. Let's you know from one podcaster to another. Not a one freaking response back. Not even a uh, that doesn't fit our wheelhouse of what we're talking about. But uh, good right. luck on your podcast. And that really pisses me off. That really how, pisses me off. How long like ago oh, was like it? Two weeks ago. Oh, okay. So there isn't enough time for him to respond. Yeah. I mean, it's just like rude. I don't know. People nowadays, everybody's got an air to them. Like, I don't know. Everybody. I agree. It's super rude. And, but who cares? Like he isn't a, you have interviewed and had the opportunity to talk to plenty more people that have more of a connection to Sly and just like kinder, more successful people anyway. If people are going to not be kind, then off with them. It's kind of my attitude. No, and I just you – know? I'm, I'm venting, and I apologize. Maybe people yeah, – Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't, or, no. But it's it's part Please of Please vent. Well, it's just like – well, it's like Rocky said in uh, part two. You know, this guy's being rude it's about true. the director. Like, this guy's being yeah, rude. Yeah, yeah. I'm here doing something. This guy's being rude. That's not very nice, is it, Adrian? And that's kind of how I feel. Like, you don't have to come on the show, but say, hey, thanks for joining the Discord. Thanks for yeah. plugging it on your podcast, because I have. Thanks for uh, talking about – the dis, uh, talking about NFTs on your whatever because I even said like my listeners you know we've talked about it on our show we kind of have a couple questions we're not too clear you know how it works can you talk about the world of it mm-hmm. this is your anyways there's there hasn't been one podcast that I have not people have reached out to me and as you know I've guessed it on numerous podcasts yeah. I've responded to everyone's emails I read them out and I, I tell you it's a little dis, it's a little disheartening to reach out to somebody in that world and this is where I feel like well then what's his angle is he really mm-hmm. a fan of Sly is it all just about the money? Like he can't be bothered because I'm just a little peon. Like he's doing me a favor. Like it's like okay, just. But the very least, just say you know it's just not in our schedule right now. I even had like Frank Stallone's people. At least they said no to me. Frank Stallone's people said no to me. They were kind enough to oh, say that it. That uh, was nice to, that they responded. Uh, yeah, Bert, I mean, same with Burt Young's people. So I, I want to make that clear. Burt yeah. Young's people also said, "No, nah, it's not really going to work out." Or it was a, it wasn't like a hard yeah. no. It was kind of like, "Oh, it's just not, it's not in their wheelhouse he right now." Or, yeah, 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 yeah. They responded. Oh, and same with um, and funny enough, same with Bridget Nielsen's people. Oh, really? Yeah. So I've re- I've reached out to everybody. I've reached out to everybody, but that's why I've never crap talked Burt Young. Or obviously not Burt Young, but you know, but his. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They all responded. At least their camp were kind enough to say, "Hey, thanks for reaching out." Not at this time. Yeah. You want me to take a shot? I'll take a shot. Exactly. I took a shot, and anyways, I, that's my vent. I, I just really, I knew I could. This is a safe space, so to speak. But it's like, don't buy the NFTs. To me, I don't know if anybody was planning on it anyway. No. I mean, to be honest, our people. We are – we're more salt-of-the-earth type people, I feel like. I think like. so. And I just you – know, I wish Sly all the best, of course, with this. Obviously, I don't need to wish him any luck. He's – I don't know how much time he has left on the planet. Anyway, he's worth $500 million. He'll be fine. He does – you're right. He doesn't need, quote, unquote, the money. If he's just setting up more income for his family, that's great. I have no – there's no problem with that. It just bugs me when people are like, hey, thanks for reaching out. And uh, 
best of luck on your show. That's great that you're mm-hmm. doing a podcast. That takes five seconds. But yeah. Anyways, anyways, I'm sorry. I sound trivial. I apologize, but no, not at all. Speaking of trivial, we got the new uh, one of our new members. Our Discord just popped in. <laughs> he popped in when I was ranting. That's great. So like, holy crap, these guys are. <laughs> This is uh, the Rocky Trivia Book. So Rocky Trivia Book, you don't have to say your real name if you don't want to. But in the live discussion chat, if you want to say who you are and maybe what your Rocky Trivia Book is, I'll be happy to plug it. See? Because that's the kind of guy I am. Yeah. So if you want to tell us what that book is or uh, what it is you're doing there and what with that, and welcome to the show and our Discord channel. Okay. All right. Anyway, you ready, Katie? I told you we had a few things to talk about. There's always a lot to talk about, like seemingly these days. But yeah, no, that's good. Trivia book, that's interesting. I wonder how we would do in a trivia game, Rocky trivia game. Uh, It depends. Uh, It depends on, do you know there's a second pet shop right next to Mickey's Gym? What do you mean by a second pet shop? There's another, there's a competing pet shop right across the street from Gloria's pet shop. Oh, really? There's a trivia. Like in real life? In real life, yeah, do you it's mean? on screen. It's on screen. When, oh. when Rocky walks across the street, there's another pet shop right next to Mickey's gym. There's a Rocky trivia. What's the name of that pet shop? It competes with Gloria's right across the street. Two competing pet shops on the same corner. I noticed when I was watching your favorite movie last night that there's a song in that movie by Frank Stallone. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, Frank Stallone, love him. Yeah, even his people said no thanks. Yeah. Probably best. Frank's not the best guy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'll yeah, leave it all right. Slick. Yeah, all right. So Rocky uh, is about to walk into the steam room. Right there on that door, we've got Jerome Artis versus Alfonso Evans. I bet you those are real boxers. You see that on the door? There's also um, behind the bar a lot of boxing posters too. Yes, um, it's, it's like a mm-hmm. boxing bar. I think we don't maybe really, yeah. I mean, we say that. I mean, we see that, but we don't. I don't think I've ever said that really in the show. Like it's legit. Like it's like a boxing bar. You know, like some sports bar. Like, but it seems to be boxing themed. Hey, boy, what are you talking for? Yo, Paul. I like to kill the freaking moron who broke the mirror. Hey, yo, Paul. Every day, every night, I pass by you. This is giving me the shoulder. You know what I mean? And then. Uh, uh, what do you mean forget? Don't, better than, uh... don't forget nothing. Every night I pass by the place I tell a joke. Every morning I pass by the place I tell a joke. So every night and every morning. So he starts the day telling a joke at the beginning of Adrian's shift at the pet shop. And then he ends with a joke. He's making moves. On, like So now he's... I, what I like here is we're seeing Rocky's legit frustration. It's like, how come she's not interested in me? Which, you know, maybe she's just not. But I love how we're under the assumption that why wouldn't she be? Well, why, seriously, why wouldn't you be? Also, that's a lot of joke writing. <laughs> Two jokes a day. Yeah. New, new ones. What we alluded to a little bit last time was that she might be a little bit. I think she likes that he stops by. She's just so, so shy that, I mean, like almost like a crippling, not almost, it's crippling, but, all, but like it's weird. The Polly in this movie, what's his issue? It's his sister. He puts her down so much. Like, you can do better than her. She's a loser. Yeah, you it, know? Is, it is interesting. Of note here, this scene was one take. One of those scenes in the film, where, again, where it's just one take. But this is our introduction, to, of course, to Polly, played by Burt Young. Speaking of Burt Young, we wish him a good health. And uh, I know he's getting up there in years. I think Burt Young in this film, though, is 35 or 6. 36, okay. yeah. So six yeah. years older than Sly himself. So if Sly is 75 now. That means Burt Young's 81 now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Paulie is the first thing he says is I want to I want to beat up the guy that broke this mirror and I love how he's combing his hair his hair is just this fro <laughs> balding fro curl and who is he doing this for the girl at the bar the blonde haired girl at the bar and he always wears that fisherman hat anyway doesn't he <laughs> yeah. usually have that well the cover up the or ball whatever spot. those yeah yeah I don't know what that hat's actually called but this bathroom looks disgusting oh it is disgusting. I think I would rather go in the alley. Go out the alley and pee in the alley. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love here. It says, meet me at 830. You see that down the written on the wall? Mm-hmm. Now, what I love is it's permanent marker. So somebody did write there, meet me at 830. Is it in the morning or the afternoon, number one? And two, where? And three, once that meeting is taken, is this a daily meeting that they have? Because <laughs> once you've um, written for- it, the date's passed, right? You can't. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. He just looks at me. You know what I mean? Looks, yeah, like I'm a plate of leftovers. What? If she looks at me like I'm a plate of leftovers. You ever catch that before? No, honestly, I don't think I did. Did you? You know what's funny? I'm just catching that too for the first time. I don't know why. Looks at me like I'm a plate of leftovers. 
Yeah. Never got that. He, it's again, like his use of his phrasing is so unique. There's other more common terms for that kind of thing. And he uses like a very interesting, a plate of leftovers. Have you ever heard that before in any other context? No, no, no I've never. Rocky Trivia book. He didn't give us his first name or nothing. That's fine. He's left the chat already, but I guess he'll listen to the episode later. But he's one of our listeners. I know he follows me on the socials as well. He says it's a book that he personally made. He says you can buy it on Amazon. It has about 300 cool. questions about Rockies 1 through 6. That's cool. Yeah, so maybe just check out Rocky Trivia Book, Google it for Amazon. All right, let's go back. So plate of leftovers, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's maybe something you can uh, devour later. You know what I'm saying? Wink, wink. Devour. <laughs> yeah. Where'd that cup come from also that he poured like half his beer into a cup for Polly? Was Ugh. that cup just sitting in there? Gross. It's yeah. Gross. It's all gross. Yeah. <laughs> I need a Cadillac to connect with your sister. Something wrong with my face, you know what I mean? No, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with this face. I have always found this weird. I mean, who wouldn't be into Rocky? Yeah. I don't know. You're, no, you're it's right. A strange he's, thing. he's a good-looking guy. He's a good-looking guy for a lot of films. I mean, basically, between even Rocky Five when he's 45 or six himself, he's a good-looking man. I mean, 75, he's a good-looking man. I hope I yeah. look and as good. Like 75 is not young, and he looks. Very fit, and uh, yeah, I know he's had some work done, obviously, but it, it's the type of work where just just borders that be careful area. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But he's yeah, done a pretty good job. Him. Where you don't, you got to be a little bit careful. You don't want to turn it into somebody's mm-hmm. mom. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I won't say whose mom, but I'd say somebody's <laughs> mom. <laughs> That's all I'll say. He's a freak of loop. Hey, sometimes she gets me so crazy, I could split her head with a razor. Don't. That's crazy. Split her head with a razor. I've always found that to be strange, too. She makes him so crazy. She doesn't seem like a naggy person when we see her, even at home. I mean, obviously, she, from what Polly says, she worries and calls the hospital or whatever if he's late. I don't know. I find that strange. I think he might be exaggerating a little bit because why would she be so worried about him? That seems strange to me. And then um, the other thing I didn't really take a lot of note before until the subtitles are on is Rocky says, don't get mental. That seems like a British thing, the, maybe, that uh, term. Because it's Canadian too-ish. So maybe that's... Is it? Yeah, okay. I, I hear that that doesn't, that doesn't strike me as odd per se. So okay. maybe it is a British thing slash Canadian as well because we're off... Well, you're theoretically yeah. offspring of the British too. Yeah. You guys left the UK, but don't get mental and... It, it, Polly says you caught me in a bad mood, but I always love that imagery. Sorry, I talked about this on Going the Distance with Ruben back when we started this show. I think it was the first episode, if not the second, we're talking about the idea of splitting someone's head open with a razor. It's just a very graphic, brutal metaphor or analogy. That's just very violent. It's a very violent image if you think about it. Extremely. And then uh, that's why, well, that's why Rocky says, "Hey, don't get mental, man." Like that's <laughs> that's a little extreme. And then Paulie goes, "You caught me in a bad mood." Mental man, you know. Well, you caught me in a bad mood. You're always in a bad mood. Adrian ain't sharp. Adrian is a loser. Hey, she's pushing thirty freaking years old, and if she don't watch <laughs> out, she's gonna end up dying alone. I'm thirty. For now, when he does that little, Adrian ain't sharp. Adrian's a loser, right? When mm-hmm. he does that, I love. That's your first time to see actually Burt Young's face. It's true. That's true. And, and he, what, he's really taking a long time with his hair. <laughs> he's got to work on that. He's trying to get the curls out, I think, or something with his comb. But I love the way he kind of punches or touches Sly's arm where Burt Young, you know, has the comb mm-hmm. in his hand. And he's like, Adrian ain't shot. Adrian's a loser. And he hits Rocky lightly in the arm with his comb. And then he goes back to the mirror. She's pushing 30 years old. Uh, Katie, have you pushed 30 years old? I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean in 1975, that was probably strange to be 29 and no prospects for a husband. Because, like, what else is a woman supposed to do other than yeah. have babies? But, yeah, I've pushed 30 years old. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I, you, I guess you've pu- yeah, you've pushed it right off a cliff. Come on. <laughs> this is- <laughs> I'm not sharp. I'm not sharp. Oh, yes, you um, are. That's a, an interesting use of – that's a strange choice of words as well, don't you think? Sharp. Sharp. Yeah. Because sharp to me – like, is he saying she's not smart? I think book smart, which is weird mm-hmm. because her parents told – their parents told them, you know, yeah. because you don't have looks, you got to use your brains. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't know what he means by sharp exactly. Maybe street smart maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But so Polly's older than 30. He's not 
you know, yeah, married with kids. She, he's so. it's, it's classic projection. His life is fine. True. He's alone. He's older than Adrian. He has so maybe he's projecting slash defensive of it. You know how you love something so much you destroy it. Maybe he loves Adrian so much that he's panicking about her own demise because mm-hmm. of his demise in life. So true, yeah. true. I will say that I really like that they're thirty. If this were today, I mean, obviously it wouldn't work for boxing, but I really dislike in movies that everybody's like 25 and right. like gorgeous. And so I kind of like that. So for if this were made today, they'd be 40 something. I don't know. I very much like that they're 30 and not married. Both of them are 30 or she's almost 30 and he's 30 and they're not married. And 1975, that was, it probably was pretty old, but I very much like that. I don't know why I, just because I guess I'm not married, and I, I don't know why I like that. So I just want to say, Dan just joined our Discord. Dan, welcome. If you want to chat, you can just type in the uh, live discussion channel part, and you chat there with your text, and we can read it. All right, so yeah, so Rocky's about to say here, I'm 30 myself, and then Paul is like, well, then you'll die alone. I love how that's the cutoff <laughs> mark. So Yeah, you cannot find love after 30. No, it's an it's, impossibility. It's impossible. Then you'll die yeah. alone. <laughs> Which is funny if you think about it. Rocky almost sort of – we can almost think he might because everyone in his life at this point in the Rocky franchise up to Creed Two is kind of dead, at least the people in these films. But it, granted, he has a son and grandson. But you know what I mean. Like the people in this film mm-hmm. have passed on by the time Creed Two rolls around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sad. Donald wanted to say that he figured Adrian was always worried due to Polly's alcoholism. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So we, Thank maybe you for the that. nagging is like you, know, you got to stop drinking, and when you're when you have a habit like alcohol, you know any kind of addiction, and you don't want to, you don't want to be told to clean up, right? It's mm-hmm. myself. And you're gonna end up dying. Hey, I don't see no crowd around you, need. I love that. He says, I don't see any crowd around you. I love that comeback. That's a great yep. comeback from Rocky. I don't see it any, is. I don't see anyone it's lining true. up at your door. Lining up at your door. <laughs> And then Polly goes back to the beginning of the conversation. I like to kill the freaking moron who broke the mirror. And he's just looking at the little corner of the mirror there. I like to kill the freaking moron who broke the mirror. That's what Come on, I... let's get out of this thing. Oh, I have a theory. <laughs> I have a theory. Oh, do you tell. Well, you know how Polly's always drunk? Yeah. He broke he the mirror. He probably did it. Yeah. <laughs> he broke the Maybe. mirror in a blackout a state of blackout drunkenness. I bet you no one's else has come up with that theory. I'm going to call it. I'm the first one to say it. He broke the mirror the same way he broke the the uh, machine in the pinball machine in Rocky Three. He has a tendency to b- break glass objects when he's in a drunken, angry state, which Polly is mm-hmm. always in. So he broke the mirror. That's the irony here. I like to kill the guy who broke the mirror. It was you, Polly. You broke the mirror. It's a sound theory. Thank you. Um, I am just now noticing how long he's been looking in that mirror. Like the, it needs to happen for this conversation. I know, but there's only so much hair on Polly's head to come. <laughs> it's it's not a realistic amount of time he spent. It's just for the scene. You're right. When you, when right, you break right. it down, he probably could have stopped combing his hair and just had a conversation with Rocky. But yeah, so now Rocky's like, let's get out of the stink. I agree. Hey, come on. Mm-hmm. I want to talk to you anyway. About what? You still work for Gaza? Yeah, sure. Why don't you talk to him about me? Well, I just don't think Jazz is hiring right now, you know? You know? Come on. So there's our first hint there of Polly wanting to work for Gazel. This is an interesting, weird side storyline that happens in this film and the second film of Polly's obsession to work for Gazel. And we see Rocky being hesitant there saying, well, you know, I haven't talked to him because Gosnell's not hiring right now. But, of course, we find out later in the film the reason why he doesn't have recommend Polly. So it's weird that Rocky, he's friends with Polly, but he also doesn't – he's friends with – we all have friends in our life where I can hang out with you, but I wouldn't recommend you to an employer. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the other thing, too, is – I mean, I guess he does work for him in the second movie, but I've always thought it was strange because does Polly think he's like this like tough collector, like Rocky, like Rocky? You know, like it makes sense for Rocky because he's a boxer, like he's tough and he could actually like hurt someone. I just don't see that with Polly. It's not like he was an athlete or I think really imposing. A bully. He don't forget he had the bat in the house later in this film. Yeah, he remember he says breaking thumbs don't bother him none. Uh, mm-hmm. Wasn't that Polly that said that? 
Yeah, but like, would he be physically capable? I mean, like, able? I don't of doing I, so. Well, you know, you he's know? like a little pit bull. Well, actually, I did send. Yeah. I did send a. Um, this was a while back. Burt Young was a real boxer earlier in his life. That's right. Mm-hmm. And so underneath that, Polly kind of stumble and build. Burt Young. So it's a combination of Burt Young himself is a very strong person back in his youth and his heyday. Also, the character of Polly in Rocky Three also talks about you know when those guys are pushing around, who knocked those bums out? Polly did. Polly protected mm. Rocky when they were younger. So Polly is a fighter. He is a scrapper. He's not in the shape that he used to be. You know how but his body might not be what it used to be, but his mind still is that fighter, that pit bull. Mm-hmm. So I think he's that smaller pit bull type mentality. Yeah. 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 And I would imagine like you got to be pretty tough to live in this neighborhood too. I think in his mind, yeah, he's that – like you watch Goodfellas, Joe Pesci's character, same idea. That's Yeah, small. yeah. He's that's small. true. Yeah. You can be small, yeah. but you've got a lot of fight in you. Good, good point. Yeah, we just got posted in our Discord. Uh, thank you, Dan. Post that picture of Burt Young. I don't know if you can see it in the chat there. Katie, if you go to the live discussion. Yeah. That's Burt Young there. Mm. Oh, his lips have always been very distinctive. He's pretty handsome here, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great picture of Burt, Burt Young there. Yeah, he's probably 25 there, I bet. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 Great Thanks for posting that. Now, this is stuff you get in Discord, people. Join our Discord. The girl's drying up. Who? My sister. If she don't start living, her body's going to dry up. So, again, she's dried <laughs> up. You know, what, you know what he's referring to? Her ovaries. She's got a few years left, but I think it's hilarious. Like, also, like, alluding to basically she's a virgin. Like, is this him saying she's almost 30 years old and she's still a virgin? But and her body's going to dry up. He's talking about he, she ain't going to be able to produce babies. Yeah. That's all women are good for. If she don't start living, her body's going to dry up. (laughs) If she doesn't open those legs. (laughs) Um, Check out this. uh, You see that girl to the left there? The one that I heard she's one of the least. Yeah. 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 She's a regular at that bar. I don't see any other women there. She Mm totally checks out Rocky when he walks out. I think they were an item before, or something like that. You know, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, you know what I mean? Why don't you come over and talk to her? Sure. Yeah. Now, it's weird how he said, like, forget my sister, forget about yeah. her. And then 35 seconds later, why don't you come over for Thanksgiving and talk to her? Maybe Polly had a quick, oh, Rocky, you're the one person that maybe, could, you know, maybe. She's maybe, got a chance. Maybe, maybe she's got a chance. So the, the one more effort. So it's weird that Polly, he seems to be oddly obsessed with. Getting her uh, sister busted. She's busted. Yeah, yeah. And then he's pissed about it. Well, he um, he flip flops a lot, and he just kind of runs his mouth like he's just kind of all over the place and just like spouts off stuff. So it's not surprising that he's a bit all over the place, I guess. He is. Rocky orders a beer for Polly. Tomorrow you come for some bird, right? Absolutely. You got it. I gotta go. If I'm 10 minutes late, she calls the hospital. So he grabs the beer and walks away without paying for it. And of course, Rocky. Now, the bartender says to Paulie, hey, come on, pay for that beer. But it's Rocky that ordered it, actually. So in theory, he'd be paying for it. It doesn't matter who he gives it to. Was it Rocky that ordered it? Yeah, he said beer. Oh. I know it's just a play for the film, but if you're at a bar and I say, hey, give me a beer, I'm buying it for my friend, but I ordered the beer. Really, the bill would be on me for ordering the bill. The yeah. Beer. Yeah. Well, he probably ordered it for himself, and Polly just took it, uh, <laughs> right? Because his beer looks to be empty. Let's see that. Let's watch it again. Yeah. Tomorrow you come for some bird, right? Absolutely. You got it. I got to go. If I'm 10 minutes late, she calls the hospital. So the bartender gave it to Polly. Polly he took did, it. yeah. And then the bartender right away said, mm-hmm. hey, why don't you pay me? But it's like, no, Rock, you ordered the beer. Come on. Sell mm-hmm. down, bartender. Mm-hmm. So in the background, yeah, Mac Lee Green. They're announcing about the Apollo has come off the airport and here to fight Mac Lee Green. What I love is how Apollo has shown up to Philadelphia so much earlier than the fight, six weeks or so before the fight. I think, you know, he's just there to kind of help promote it. But is that common? Do fighters do that? Do fighters show up to the, where they're going to fight weeks before the fight? Not now, probably, but I don't know if you had to do more of a road show back in the day. It works for the movie. It has to. Right? I know, <laughs> but I, we're, this is our job to break this kind of stuff down. This interview could have easily just happened in L.A. 
where right. Paul's from. They could have just said, hey, we're meeting Apollo outside of his palatial gym in L.A. <laughs> and we had this interview with him with about the Mackley Green fight coming up in Philly. Like, all that could have happened without him having to be in Philly for it. That's all I'm saying. Like, it doesn't matter. Well, either that or there's like a press conference about it or something. But again, it doesn't have to be held where the event is. If both fighters are there. Yeah. It doesn't, obviously. But if Mackley Green is a Philadelphia fighter, one of... Uh, maybe, um, yeah. And it, yeah. I'm not really sure. That's my guess. That's... That's a good guess. Maybe Mackley is a uh, local. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. The fabulous spectrum. Harry, you're speaking now of your much publicized bicentennial fight. That's right. This is going to be the greatest sport and event in the country's history. A gala occurrence with me beating Green like he committed a crime. Would you take a look? A gala event with me beating Mackley Green like he committed a crime. I guess police brutality is allowed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one. I almost didn't catch that. Clothes. I mean, he is just over the top. Like, he and his wife, the wife is in this big fur coat, which wasn't faux pas back in the 70s, I guess. And he just, you know, he has this, like, perfectly fitted suit with the co- overcoat. And, I mean, they're just glamour to the nines in this interview. Now, did you know that Paul's wife, Marianne, has mm-hmm. been played by three different actresses? That is woman, that woman that not? Woman is, the, no, she's in. Uh, she's. I, I did have her name here. Uh, oh, uh, good catch. Yeah. So this woman playing his wife in the first film. This is her only appearance, but she's playing uncredited. She's actually uncredited too, but she's playing Creed's wife. But she's not other stuff though. Funny enough, like I think she's still alive. She, so her and Felicia Rashad are both still alive, but the actress that played oh. Apollo's wife in parts two and four. That's the actress has passed on. Yeah. Three different women have played Paul's wife. Interesting. Does she not show up later? Is this her only appearance? Yeah, on screen. In this? Oh, okay. Um, we're so used to these huge TVs and like, I don't know, 10 monster screens in a bar, like a sports bar or something to watch whatever. Here they have this like nine inch, 12 inch black and white TV, like one TV in the bar. That's what, we're, what they're watching it on. Her name it's is, just such a stark contrast. Her name is Laval Roby. She's still alive. Okay. And she has had a kind of a kind of a fun little career here of mixed just guest little spots on TV shows and straight to video type stuff. A very small career, like not a lot of acting credits, but she's been acting since 68, 1968 to 2021. Hmm. But she only has 54 credits. So that's interesting. Like a, from 1968 until 2021, only 54 credits. Actively acting, but I don't know who her agent is. But she has a sizzle reel. <laughs> a current one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, I watched it. Okay. It's it's a pretty bad. You know, you know how people can have a sizzle reel, right? Yeah. Here's a sample of her sizzle reel. So this is her... Yelling at somebody. Here. City slick ass wasn't right for made for you a year a year ago. You're not my judge, Sister Douglas. You probably spend more time with Jack than you do with Jesus. Hey, this ain't about me in case you hadn't noticed. So right now, I have much bigger fish to fry. The building ain't the only thing that needs rewiring around here. If you're not careful, you won't be here when those inspectors come back. And neither will I. All right. Some Laval <laughs> I was expecting. I was expecting there to be like more than one uh, example. Oh, well, there's another one. Yeah. She she had a guest spot on the show called The Shield. Okay, okay. that was her big one. She oh. she she led with that one because that actually has smart writing or whatever. But even then, she plays a again. She an angry another <laughs> angry black woman role. <laughs> Sorry. After he stole it the last time, I carved my initials on the back. E B. That's me. Emily Berry. How about my picture frame there? Hey, that is not your picture. All right. So there she goes. Laval Roby, acting since 1968. <laughs> she was the first. All right. Yeah, she was the first Creed wife. Pretty exciting stuff, eh? So, yeah, but that I found it interesting. I don't know how many people knew that Marianne was played by three different actresses. She doesn't have a name yet, right? In this one. She's never referred to as Marianne Creed. It was a retcon, yeah. you could say. So when this film was came yeah. out, there was no... This is Marianne Creed on the cast. Like, I'd have to watch the credits at the end to see if Lavelle Robbie is mentioned. That's a good. I could, I guess, with theory, we could do that now. But we'll do it later yeah. to see if she actually yeah. ends up being credited. Yeah. So now Dan Sherman here, who plays the bartender. Again, I said before he is a comedian. Go on YouTube. You can see his 
comedic stylings. Not that great. I'm not going to lie to you. Not that. He's pretty good as the bartender, though. Yeah, he's, I quite uh, like him. Yeah, he's good as – I mean, his stand-up routine is very – I don't know how to say it. It's kind of very – it's almost like what you expect him to sound like. I don't know how to explain it. It's just – Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The type of stuff you hear in the 80s and 90s from guys like him? I don't know. It's yeah. Hard. Yeah. Did that guy... The I mean, where the, the real world fight is going to come the from? The pros. What we got today in Jig Clowns. Now, this is... Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts here? What, what do you think is happening here? Well, super racist. Yes. He's, like, basically saying, where are all the white fighters? He only considers the white... That's how I took it. It's like, he only considers... He's like, what's boxing coming to now? Like all the professional athletes, it seems like he has a chip on his shoulder about that. Like athletes, there aren't as many white athletes yeah. as he would prefer. Maybe the question. What I, do you think? Yeah, no, you're. I t- yeah, this is exactly what's. And this is actually very incredible, right? So again, Sly wrote this, right? Mm-hmm. He's writing the character of somebody saying, "Hey, here is a immaculate green." Funny enough, the guy he's fighting was black as well. Mm-hmm. So he's like this bartender, 1976, is saying, hey, "All we're getting today, all we're getting today, are these." black fighters where's all the white fighters where are they at uh and keep in mind too this was during the time of muhammad ali so this is kind of a reference but probably mm-hmm. people were saying about muhammad ali i guess there's the he says the phrase jig clown and i feel like he's also kind of in addition like very showmany like maybe he doesn't appreciate that let's just like focus on the athletics and not be such a showman yeah, so definition here, it, it, so jig is actually, according to the internet, extremely disparaging and offensive. It's a contemptuous term used to refer to a black person. Mm, and the clown part yeah. is, yeah, it's, it's like he's, showmanship, yeah. yeah. fooling around. It's terrible that racism is still, well, still a thing now, of course, but this is, again, smart writing by Sly in 1976 mm-hmm. to, to address this issue. Of course, we know Sly's not a racist, but he's addressing this issue in the film. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And because we'll see Rocky defend Apollo and get defensive about that comment without saying, hey, you're a racist, but you, making it known that, hey, you're, what you're saying is not cool. But so Rocky catches it and he's not happy. His mood changes very quickly here with the insult. And in keeping with great events throughout the country's history, Apollo Creed will duplicate the cracking of the Liberty Bell by cracking Mac Lee Green. I love the way he talks, Apollo. Great, of course, great acting by Carl Weathers coming yeah. out of nowhere. Carl comes out of nowhere. This He just... Boy, Energy he, he brings. Just as much as Sly will always be known as Rocky, Carl Weathers mm-hmm. will always be known as Apollo. Yeah. Can you imagine anyone else as Apollo? I mean, no, no. So Rock's like, he's a clown. This guy's not a clown. And then it goes back to Paul saying, I love the line there. This is the bicentennial event. Mm-hmm. Of course, the Liberty Bell's in Philadelphia. So, And it, I understand it's cracked. Just like the Liberty Bell's crack, I'm going to crack Mac Lee Green. You know, I love that. He, he ties the two events together. It's great. That's probably why he came to Philadelphia. Not only that the fight's in Philly, it's bicentennial. Like there's a whole heritage history right. ab- about America and Philadelphia and blah, blah. You're so. totally right about the uh, the promotion. You're right. He's got feet on the ground. There was no internet back then. So he kind of had to be there, right? He couldn't yeah. stream this. He had to be there, walk around, talk. Yeah, he's boosting the ticket sales and the pay-per-view. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. You call Apollo Creed a clown? Do you have what any quick advice like for you unboxing? Stay in school and use your brain. Be a doctor, be a lawyer, carry a leather briefcase. Forget about sports as a profession. Sports make you grunt and smell. See, be a thinker, not a stinker. That is one of my favorite lines of the whole series. I love it. Apollo has the best one-liners, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Be a thinker, not a stinker. Carry a leather briefcase, which Rocky tries to do in part two. (laughs) He tries to do that. He tries to get an office job. Ironic, I guess, because Apollo is looking so polished and he looks like a businessman. He's dressed to the nines in his suit and leather briefcase here. So he doesn't look like a stinker. No, he's very well spoken too. He's like he's a articulate, a, yeah. smart, and that's what I love about the character. Again, kudos to Sly. The character of Apollo is amazing. Like Sly wrote him mm-hmm. to be smart, intelligent, the best fighter. Like he's not just a brute. He's not, you're right. He's, he's a smart businessman. He's a businessman. You see him in his office. Yeah. He's he's thinking about the business. He's the planning sessions. Apollo is the smartest guy in the movie. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I love Apollo. I'm like at a loss for words how great Apollo is, the character and Carl Weathers as him. 
perfect. And I love how we're seeing this on a blue and white screen in the bar. Even with this little screen, you see the energy and charisma pop through. We haven't seen him live yet mm-hmm. off the TV screen. We're seeing him for the first time with Rocky and the bartender. But already we're seeing this charismatic guy popping out of this little screen onto the movie screen. Well put. And look at Tony Burton right there. This is his first appearance right there behind the tall. Oh my gosh, I wasn't even looking. Yes, and look at that huge smile. Oh, he loves that line. Be think you're not a secret. That's my boy. That's my boy, Apollo. That's what he does. Who said that? Who said that? No, that's what he's thinking. That smile. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is the best. I love it. Yeah. And he's putting on a show, but the message is great too. Like, hey, kids, I know I'm pretty awesome here, but stay in school. Don't try and be a professional athlete. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Great comments here in our Discord. Donald said that back then Italians got hated on too. He said that um, mm. more so back then in the 70s. So it you might dumb have been, Dago is yeah. what Mick said. That's right. You right? dumb Dago. That's right. So it probably is an issue near and dear to Sly's heart that racism. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So thank you, Donald. Dan says that it's a Paul story until he dies. It makes the whole franchise. The Rockies 1 through 4 is the journey of Apollo. That's true. Yeah. Also, Donald says that Apollo was originally more of a jive-talking soul brother, but it was changed once Mm. he saw what Carl could bring to the character. So it was tweaked for... Oh, uh, interesting. I like this so much better. Oh, of course, yeah. Well, I think it was based, of course, on Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali was also a very smart businessman and and very intelligent himself. But I like how, yeah, that Carl brings that intelligence and savviness and business smartness to this character as well as mm-hmm. the uh, showmanship part. Yeah, the combination is, is stellar. Okay, thanks a lot, champ. Yeah, Jerry Simpson. The craziest man is champion in the world. He took his best shot and become champ. Huh? What shot did you ever take? Well, now, that's a bit of a dig. Now, Rocky has every right to feel defensive about the champ because that's his profession. Rocky's profession yeah. is a boxer. He's a boxer. Well, he's not a very good one. He's still boxing in, in the basements of churches, turn gyms or whatever. And so he's saying this guy here is the champion of the world, especially back in the time when the boxing champion was like, when you're the boxer, you're the considered the toughest guy in the world. When you were the heavyweight yeah. champion of the world, you were the fighter. Nobody throws punches with the heavyweight, right? And so Rocky's like, hey, this guy's the champion of the world. But what are you saying here? He took the shot and became champ. And then he throws a bit of a – now, this is not fair – of Rocky. This is where he gets a little bit defensive. He goes, what shot did you ever take? Meaning, you're just a bartender, right? And that's not a fair statement because we're all different things. We all can't be champion. We all can't be boxers. But Rocky is defensive here, and he doesn't do this very often. You don't see very often Rocky trying to hurt somebody else. I guess I didn't take it like that. You're right. It is a dig, sort of. It is and it isn't. He's just sort of like, hey, you don't have room to talk here. In his sphere, this bartender, he owns a bar. He's a bartender. He owns his own business. Well, yeah, he is the owner of the bar, not just the bartender. So, yeah, I totally get that. But I think Rocky's point is, like, basically, that's good. You own a bar, but you're still in this shitty neighborhood in Philadelphia. You never got out of wherever you – Rocky's making assumptions that everybody has dreams like he does to, like, be bigger. Yeah. And and that's what it means. He's projecting – He's projecting his mm-hmm. own quote-unquote failures. Because what shot did you ever take? It's a bit of a sting comment. And the bartender rightfully so took it personally. Hey, Rocky, you're not happy with your life. It's nice. Me, I got a business going. I don't have to take no shots. No one having gone more than 12 right. rounds with him. And that was... So he says you're not happy with your life. And that really stings Rocky back because it's true. Mm-hmm. He's not happy. This whole first half hour of the film is Rocky's miserable existence. He can't get the girl. He's fighting in the gym. He lost his locker. And the bartender is, uh, like most bartenders, he's pretty astute of people's lives outside the bar. You know, he he knows who they are when they come in and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's right. You're not happy with your life. That's you, man. I'm actually... I'm actually happy. And that's to the point. Maybe he hasn't left Philadelphia, but he actually is happy. He doesn't have to be champion of the world to be happy. Now, what he said about Apollo was wrong. and But now Rocky, again, is projecting his own failures onto the bartender. The bartender's like, dude, I'm happy. I don't know about you, but I actually like who I am. That's true. Stick that up your business. Dude, so insulted. Want me to take a shot? All right. Take a shot. And that's, of course, a classic line there. We'll yeah, I love that. When Rocky said, I guess I didn't think it was super mean – 
when he said, what shot did you ever take? But it was really uncalled for when he throws his crumpled dollars on the bar counter and says, like, stick it up your yeah, stick this up your business. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that was mean. I think it's the meanest we've ever seen, Rocky, the character. What do you think? Mm-hmm. I think so. And I really didn't even remember that he said that until yeah. we're watching it so closely. Look, Rocky's not a saint. We're not, none of us are. We all have bad days. I'm sure there's probably scenes in Rocky's life that we never just don't see on film. But the, from what we gather, though, on the franchise, Rocky as a whole is a – the person himself is a good person. Like he's kind to others. He loves animals. He's patient. Remember in part two, hey, Rocky, you got anything derogatory to say about the champ? Uh, derogatory. Yeah, he's the best. Like he doesn't think in terms of trying to hurt people, right? But in this scene right here, yeah, this is probably the most hurt Rocky's been by somebody outside of his family uh, in the sense of like – because he's insulted Rocky's trajectory that – didn't come to be so Rocky's defensive and sometimes when you're defensive you lash out that's true I'm trying to think what comes right after this but this seems to kind of tie a bow on the first act so to speak well the the next scene the next episode with Kyle and you will be him walking little Marie little I was gonna say Marianne yeah little Marie from the hoagie shop to her house Mm. so that will be the cap of like holy crap okay that's 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 the ending of his journey of this guy is a loo (laughs) Mm-hmm. yeah so yeah i look forward to that and look forward to talking about that sequence yeah this was fun this is a good episode no well, they're all good but I, you know what i it was like a couple weeks ago i was just in the mood to watch the old rocky and it's not on netflix or it's not on hbo max anymore the rocky films? It used to be no oh no yeah that's how i used to watch them is hbo max and they're not on there anymore where would they be for you i'm um, like on a streaming service you mean yeah I don't know. I have them. I have them too, but it's nice just to be able to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a site called Just Watch. Oh. Yeah. So called Just Watch USA. So you go, just Google Just Watch USA. It's called the streaming guide for movies and TV shows in your country. So if I go to that and then I go search, so I'll search Rocky, it'll tell you where it's available. So it says here that Just Watch is available in these services Max Go, Apple TV, Amazon. So it's. All these streaming services, of course. So the only thing that it's free on, if you have a subscription service, I should say, is something mm-hmm. called Max Go. Max Go. I don't know what that is. I don't huh? know what that is. Anyway. Oh, that might be HBO Max. This site's pretty updated. Like, it's pretty it's pretty legit. Okay. But maybe they just took it off, like, this month. I think they did because oh, I okay. – yeah, and then later I saw something about these are the things leaving this month or something. Oh, and I was like, okay. the Rocky movies, what? Well, because they have to yeah. pay the contract, right? It's not like it's just yeah. on there forever. They have to kind of rent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, there's a little plug though. Again, Google just watch whatever country you're in. It can tell you where everything is streaming. Yeah, and it'll give you the best prices. It tells you all the okay. from so you know, let you know. Hey, if you're a part of this, because everyone's a part of like five different streaming services, so it tells you you can find this movie on that streaming service. It's really handy. It's on yeah. Amazon Prime, or it's on HBO, or it's on. Yeah, it's really handy. Or on Netflix, even that too. I'll tell you that too. Or Hulu, mm-hmm. or what have you. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Donald also said it's on some uh, yeah, <laughs> free movie sites. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of free uh, pirating streaming oh, sites. Yes, yes. We, okay. You know, of course. Anyways, well, that's it. The episode was over. I didn't hear no bell. I just want to say-